Hello friends. So today's video is going to be a list of books that I would advise not giving up on too quickly. I definitely think that if you are picking up a book and you absolutely hate it, or you can just tell that the writing style is going to irritate you, then don't force yourself to keep reading. That's my thought anyway. I think life is too short to force yourself to read books that you clearly know are not for you. However, with these books, I think some of these are ones that you almost want to go in knowing it might take a little bit more time before you're really invested in the plot and the characters. And so I figured I would give the heads up, if you will, that these ones do require maybe a little bit of grace when it comes to how much time you give them initially. So the first one I'm going to mention, this one is 100% due to the fact that most reviewers, most readers think that there's not a whole lot of a plot, and that would be The Blade Itself by Joe Abercrombie. Really quick too, I just want to shout out the broken binding for these amazing special editions. Any alternate covers or covers that you aren't used to seeing that I end up having in this video, I'll have information about those linked in the description bar, but jumping into why I think the first law, more specifically beyond just saying there's not a whole lot of a plot, there are a lot of us that are character-driven readers, and there's a lot of us that are plot-driven readers. And this is one that I would say is so much rooted in the characters. So if you are a plot-driven reader, you are going to be reading wondering, when are things going to actually happen? What the heck? What are we doing? It just meanders. You really do just follow characters by themselves for a while. You really don't see any kind of an overarching plot that's driving all of them towards some kind of common goal. They're just people. Some of them aren't very good. In fact, most of them aren't very good. So I do think that if you're going to pick up the First Law trilogy, probably give this first book quite a while. I might even recommend reading the entirety of the first book. And then if you really didn't like anything about it, I would say I don't know if the second and third books are going to really be for you. The next couple are actually two of my favorite books. I probably don't need to go all that in depth with the plot lines themselves or the synopses, but those would be The Bone Shard Daughter and Ninth Rain, or the first book in the Winnowing Flame trilogy. I'll start with The Bone Shard Daughter. This one, the reason I would say you might want to give it some time is that you are going to be, actually I'll say that for both of these, you are going to likely be confused for a lot of the beginning of the book. With Ninth Rain, I would say the confusion stems from the fact that so much of the world, there is so much to it. And our main characters are accustomed to all of these things, but you as the reader are not. So it takes quite a long time to know what is going on. The writing style itself is not dense. I don't think the author is purposefully withholding information. It's just it takes some time for that information to organically become something that you as the reader understand. With The Bone Shard Daughter, the reason I would say most of the time you are going to be a little bit like, what the heck is going on for a while is due to the genre bender of a book that it is. I mean, the Winnowing Flame trilogy is also a bit of a genre bender, but this one really, this first book in this trilogy, there are elements of horror, there are elements of sci-fi, and to just put it and say it's fantasy, I think is a little untrue. And the magic of the world is very bizarre. The thing that I would say really is confusing is with one perspective, our character has lost their memories. This character is really the only one that we can see firsthand how the magic works, but they don't remember how the magic works. And so they are trying to gain their memory back and they're trying to understand the magic and they're trying to excel as best they can. But there's also clearly something sinister going on. And so they're trying to get to the bottom of that while trying to regain their memories. So how all of that is revealed to the reader is part of what's so interesting and exciting, but I would say it takes a good hundred pages before you feel like your feet are firmly on the ground for both of these. And even then, I don't know if firmly on the ground is probably the best way to put it. It feels like maybe you can stand up for a little bit without falling over. After that, we have a couple of manga series. We have Full Metal Alchemist and Vinland Saga. And the thing that I think is true for both of these is that the amount of depth that you get within them, I don't know if their first initial arcs really reveal to you just how much your emotions are gonna be pulled at. Vinland Saga is actually historical fiction, not fantasy. It follows some individuals who were actually real people in history, as well as some that were fictional or people that have essentially become myths. And we see a young boy whose father walked away from the life of a Viking to live very peacefully, 
but that life is not done with him. And our main character, Thorfinn, is seeing the consequences of this violent past that his father had, as well as wanting to get revenge for some things that end up transpiring. The first part, though, while being very action-packed, I don't think really shows how much depth the series gets because it has some really profound moments. And you're not going to see that in the beginning because the beginning is just this awesome battle kind of a moment. I'm not usually a fan of those kinds of beginnings anyway because even though they're high stakes, part of what makes me feel so attached and gripped and edge of your seat sort of a feeling at those sorts of moments are the emotions and the attachments I have to the characters. And if I don't have that yet, then the action doesn't really speak to me, if you will. And so it's it's a cool opening, especially if you go into something and you like that excitement. But for me, I like there to be a little bit more than just the action. And the show actually, because there is an adaptation, the anime doesn't start with that scene. And I think that was kind, I, I think that was a great choice. And then with Full Metal, the first arc, it kind of gives you the sass of Edward and you get sort of the cuteness that is Alphonse because this character is a cinnamon roll. It's these two brothers who they tried to bring their mother back from the dead using alchemy. Things went terribly wrong and they did not succeed in bringing their mother back. But on top of that, Edward lost an arm and a leg. His brother's soul is the only thing that has been preserved, but it's been attached to a suit of armor. And so his brother's entire body is gone and they're trying to find a way to restore their bodies. You get all this information essentially in the beginning, but just how heartbreaking it is, their failure, their backstory. I think we dive further into that later on. You also get so many more characters later on and they're all phenomenal characters all of their individual backstories are great plus the anime full metal aqua's brotherhood which directly follows the manga the first episode is sort of a strange pilot episode and i kind of encourage people to skip that first one because it's cool to watch but you're like i don't know what's happening right now and none of this means anything to me so just a heads up that that first one you might want to might want to push through. But I do want to say, just because I was mentioning some some adaptations, that if you ever are interested in watching the Castlevania show, the first season is very short. It's essentially a elongated prologue. And it's not until what is officially called season two, even though that feels more like the first real season, that everything starts to kind of come together. So I would say if you're going to try Castlevania, watch the first and the second seasons. Because, man, by the end of the second season, you're like, aww. And you really feel for characters that you didn't think you would feel for and you sort of feel bad for feeling for. The next two, I feel bad saying this, but the reason I would recommend giving them a little more time is because they're a little boring in the beginning. And it takes some time before I think that the plot really picks up. And those two would be A Darker Shade of Magic by V.E. Schwab and Strange the Dreamer by Lainey Taylor. So on top of it taking a while for the plot to really get going, the other thing with Strange the Dreamer is it has a very lyrical sort of purple prose sort of writing style and I'm not somebody who usually enjoys that kind of writing. I usually like my writing to be a little more straightforward just because with fantasy there's already so much to take in that I don't know that I always want so many similes and metaphors and for things to be too poetic in nature because then I almost feel like it makes it more difficult to really comprehend, wait, what is magic? What is real? What is normal for these characters? What is actually really strange for these characters? And with this one, I, by the end, really loved the writing style. I thought it served the story really well, but I almost DNF'd this for a decent amount. I was like, when is this gonna turn into that beautiful story I keep hearing everybody describe it as? And eventually it did. And it is one of my favorite stories of all time. But I do think that for a while, you're just kind of like, all right, uh, this guy seemed kind of sick when he was a baby. Now he works in a library. This other guy's kind of mean to him. When are things going to happen? And then things do happen. And it's great. With The Darker Shade of Magic, this is one that I definitely need to reread because I read it years ago. But I remember quite vividly waiting for the plot to start. And it eventually does. We follow a man named Kel who has the ability to travel between parallel Londons, and he is one of the only people who can do this. And you are not meant to bring certain items from one London 
back to the other, or from one world back to the other. And something occurs where an item is brought through and it disrupts things is how I'll word it. Once that happens, then it moves rapidly. But until that point, it's like, what? what are we doing? The next two books, I would advise giving more time simply because these worlds are so massive or there's so much to these books that you just need time to acclimate yourself. And that would be The Storm My Archive by Brandon Sanderson and City of Dusk. City of Dusk, you've probably heard a little bit less about as it is a new release from this year. But it is adult fantasy that I would say almost feels new adult because the characters themselves, they feel quite youthful and they are quite young. But the world is very epic. So there's so much going on. Each of the perspectives belongs to a different house, I'll call it. And these various houses are all sort of going head to head as far as who will become the next heir to rule over everyone. And each of the people from each of these houses that you get the perspectives of, of which there are a lot of perspectives. Some of them are friends with people from other houses. Some of them are kind of enemies or frenemies with people from the other houses. Some of them are romantically involved. Some of them don't have any interest in anybody in that way. You just get all these different little things and there's little, little things you want to pick up on between the relationships. And on top of that, each house has a different magic system because there are these sort of gods and goddesses that the houses got their magic through and that's sort of what established their power within society but you see you, ha you have to take time to learn about all of these different magic systems and then there's also kind of like are these the only magic systems are the gods actually real or are they is this just a belief and there's so much to uncover i think that's very true of stormlight archive as well for so long one there's just a lot of characters and a lot of pages in this story plus there is the backstory chapters that you get so it is a really slow start and sanderson books are kind of known for having their their explosive endings so much so there's even a term a sander lanch but that's what you could say about the size of the story in general is it's just so epic and each installment is essentially multiple books in one. There's just so much to get to know about these characters and Sanderson really takes his time. But by the end, it's, I mean, I think it's worth it. I know not everybody loves Way of Kings and Storm My Archive, but you definitely want to give this book some, some time, especially just because it's over a thousand pages. So it's going to need more time than the average book as far as page count goes already. A lot of the books that I've mentioned happen to be favorites. So apparently I like books that take some time. But the last one that's true of this one as well, that would be Fireborn by Rosaria Munda. It's essentially what if the Ru Russian Revolution had dragons. It is a fantasy world, but there's not really any magic beyond the mythological creatures and the connection that the writers have with them. But otherwise, there's really not magic. It's very politically driven. The beginning of the story, I would advise pushing through because it feels a little generic at first, and the characters, they feel very youthful in a realistic way. They feel very young, and they're trying to experience life as a young person, but they're also experiencing life as a young person after a revolution, and they're trying to establish this new form of government, and these young people end up having burdens placed on them that they honestly are... Nobody should have to have these burdens placed on them, but also they're so young to have to make some of the decisions that they do, and I kind of feel like by having this beginning where there's almost this sense of innocence to the characters and you see this almost slice of life you know they interact with their friends and there's sort of certain dynamics between certain characters and all that when you see things start to happen that are more negative in nature and when the consequences really start to hit them of the revolution that's when i think it makes that beginning necessary and it makes the rest of it so much more heartbreaking kind of like what i was saying about vinland saga you sort of have this piece that when once you see how important that piece is for the development of these characters to have that disrupted it just hurts that much more that's it for some books that i would recommend giving a little bit extra time to at the beginning before you ultimately decide if the book is for you or not but anyway let me know some other books that you feel very similarly about Thanks so much for watching. I hope you have a lovely rest of your day and I'll see you all later. Bye.